can you please tell us what kind of meat a uh, Sephardic is allowed to eat? Okay, uh, well, a, uh, the whole issue of kashrut has created a lot of confusion in the world, and uh, uh, sometimes zealous bale tshuva have made the mistake, the mistake of joining the cancel culture uh, and thinking that it is righteousness. Now, unfortunately, this has happened in, uh, even by big people. I'm not going to mention any names, don't ask me. But anyone who knows, knows what I'm referring to. There are some really big people, some really big rabbis even, that have spoken against the, uh, the kashrut industry uh, to the extent that they have told people not to eat the kashrut, the meat of any place, only slaughter themselves uh, or have somebody that knows to slaughter and don't trust anyone, don't rely on anyone, you shouldn't eat meat, you shouldn't uh, eat chicken, you shouldn't eat anything. And this, Rabotai, is a mistake. And those that listen to them are making a mistake. Rabotai himself called one of the uh, people that uh, said it and told him, you're making a mistake, don't get involved, you don't know enough about Kashrut in order to make such judgment calls. There are people that are more knowledgeable than you, that know more than you, don't do it. And unfortunately, some people listened to Rabu Vadya and some people did not listen to Rabu Vadya. But the point being, Rabutai, is that anyone that is simply uh, joining this cancel culture, listening to people that are saying you shouldn't eat meat anywhere, uh, is unfortunately practicing not righteousness, but apikosut. Apikosut, heresy. Why? Number one, Gdole Ado know a lot more than you. If they say don't eat from anywhere, then you don't eat from anywhere. If they don't, then obviously you have the obligation. You have the obligation not to cancel out the whole world. You can't cancel out a kosher Jew just because you don't know what you're talking about. You don't know what you're talking about. So of course, I'll tell you some things. Number one, a Sephardi Jew, Sephardi Jew, actually all Jews, all Jews, surely it is better to have your own shochet, your own butcher, your own slaughterer, slaughter the cow right in front of you. But the reality is, that is assuming that you know what you're talking about, where you would be able to tell that the shechita that he did was kosher, which, he, which, which you don't. Why? Because if you did, you'd probably slaughter the cow yourself or the chicken yourself. Number two, you would know what to look for when they open up the cow or the chicken, checking the lungs, checking the, the legs, seeing if there is a, uh, 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 whether they're checking Tzomet the Gidim, whether there, there's, uh, uh, there's stringencies being held, if uh, they put uh, uh, shots, sometimes they're not careful with the shots, and they stick it in the legs, and, they, uh, and that causes a little bit of a hole, and uh, some people consider that even Taref, are you keeping that, not keeping that? People don't know what they're talking about. There is no, I heard this big rabbi, I heard this small rabbi, I heard my local rabbi, I heard my local friends. He said, don't eat anywhere and therefore I don't eat anything. I'm living off of plants. You, my friend, are an idiot. And not only an idiot, some will even call you an apikos for doing such things. Why? I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example. Number one, canceling a kosher Jew. Canceling a kosher Jew, saying that a kosher Jew is a liar without having a reason, a reason is without having proof, without having legitimacy to it, is 100% a sin from the Torah. Number one. Number two, a lot of times people spread these videos where they show you the factory of, uh, of uh, chickens or, uh, and they, uh, or of uh, cows and they show you, oh, look. There is a uh, line of chickens over here, and some of them are kosher, some of them are taref. That means that everything is taref. First of all, this is complete nonsense. Surely everybody needs to be careful, but to just assume that just because this guy's pointing and he says that one box is full of kosher and one box is, uh, is taref, doesn't mean that they're selling both as, as, as kosher. Doesn't mean that they're selling both. You're saying they're not careful enough to your likings. Okay, they're not careful enough to your likings. You run a factory. Maybe you do something better. Maybe you do something better. But they just assume that they're not kosher 
and that everybody is a criminal it's complete nonsense now then saying no they're doing it because all they care about is money it's not true at all why the rabbis are not doing it for money the rabbis are just getting paid to do ashgacha they don't own the factory very few rabbis own the factories it's other people that are uh, they're paying the rabbis as employees they're paying the rabbis as employees it's not uh it's not like what people think and how the news makes it seem especially you know people that like attention they make everything seem like it's all tarif everything is a uh, people have to read that's the mood. so just canceling all kashrut is nonsense number one number two, uh number two number three as far as kashrut is concerned if you're a Sephardi Jew ideal is for you to eat bet yourself meat bet yourself meat if you have access to it that's the ideal for you to eat now does that mean that if it's not bet yourself you're not allowed to eat it no it doesn't mean that it doesn't mean that many people think it means that but it doesn't mean that first of all there's no uh most people consider both poultry and uh uh bakar, uh, uh cows and uh, you know uh meat really but uh because we have to wait six hours uh, for either one of them to from 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 me to dairy but uh, there are they are uh, a little bit different but nonetheless there is no bet yourself as far as chicken there is no bet yourself as far as chicken or things like that so uh chicken has a lot more uh easy to find chicken and uh, and, and uh kashrut for chicken for meat if you want to have bet yourself meat sure you have access to bet yourself meat that they get from argentina they get from uh, 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 you know, different places uh, in in America or and so on. You have bet yourself meat for sure. But if it's not bet yourself, it doesn't mean that it's not kosher. It doesn't mean that it's not kosher, and it's not. You can't go to all your friends and say, "Oh, no, you're not eating bet yourself. Oh, you're eating talif." It's not true. It's simply not true. Why is it not true? So to check for meat, a person needs to know a few things. Number one. If, if you have let's say two legs of a cow hey slaughter the cow slaughter was kosher everything is good okay took legs of the cow or took a piece of the cow big piece of the cow right you have two pieces two big giant pieces right kosher best somebody made a mistake with one of the shechitot or the or the cow was taref there was a problem with the uh the, the the lungs whatever and he also had another piece big piece just like yours but that was taref and he said I'm gonna leave it over here I'm gonna go to the bathroom and he leaves the piece and you didn't pay attention and he comes back an hour and a half later to pick up the piece he's like give me the piece oh I forgot which one it is and you can't tell what it is now you have three pieces you have three pieces each worth tons of money two of them for sure are kosher one of them 100% tarif 100% tarif what do you do what do you do I would say a hundred percent of the audience in the general public will say you have to throw them all out and you would all be wrong they are all kosher you eat all of them and Rabbeinu Yonah says if you don't you are an apikos why that's that Torah that's that Torah you made a mistake not you did it on purpose you made a mistake one of the three it's tarif for sure but you don't know which one it is a mistake that Torah we go after the majority now you're gonna say like I thought when I first learned this no isn't it one for 60 no it's not not for that not for this particular issue not for for this particular issue for this particular issue we go after the majority the smallest amount of majority is two versus one obviously if it was three versus two same thing if it was uh five versus four same thing but two versus one one of them one out of the three is for sure 100 percent tarif but you don't know which one it is you eat all three of them and if you don't you're not because your average person that thinks that no these people are not kosher these rabbis are not kosher the meat's not allowed rebukes the whole community rebukes it doesn't know any of this doesn't know nothing doesn't know how to slaughter doesn't know nothing 
but they feel comfortable telling the whole purpose pe- world what to eat what not to eat what this what that so that's another thing you need to know that there are times that there is going to be mistakes and the Torah already took it into consideration where you're gonna have 10 giant boxes of kosher stuff and there's a box lost in it mistake not on purpose if it's on purpose the whole thing is to live. if it's on purpose you put it in then the whole thing is to live. but if it's a mistake we go after the majority meaning you're gonna have some tariff inside your uh, inside your uh, uh plate from time to time but according to the Torah 100 percent kosher 100 percent kosher that's the one second thing is there are some things that even a thousand fold won't cancel out a thousand fold won't cancel out what is it a living bug a living animal goes into the uh let's say uh the the stew uh, or into the uh into the it's into the food you if you can't find it the whole thing is tarif you have a soup you have a soup like they have like in the army bases you know a soup where the uh the chavit the the, the thing is like uh multiple wine barrels like one of those giant things the size of a house you have one tiny one tiny little bug go swimming in there but you don't know where he is you don't know where he went you don't have some type of little animal traveling in there now surely there's more soup there's more meat there's more chicken there's more vegetable than uh than the uh, thing a lot more than 60 fold a lot more than a thousand fold you can't find it the whole thing is tarif you have to throw the whole thing out average person out there watching this doesn't know it thinks nah just a little bug just a little bug I'm gonna well, throw out five thousand dollars worth of meat for this little bug five thousand dollars worth of soup everybody's gonna starve for the whole day because I nah come on it's a little bug wrong wrong it's alive a thousand fold doesn't cancel out a thousand fold doesn't cancel out so a person needs to know don't talk about things you don't know what you're talking about start telling the whole world oh no look at this video look there, there's nothing's kosher uh rabbi such and such told me Rabbi such a judge doesn't know what he's talking about even though knows a lot knows a lot more than I could ever know about a lot of things but he doesn't know more than Rabbi Vadya. he doesn't know more than the people that are experts in Shechita experts in Kashrut just because you're a good Kiruv Rabbi and you have some nice Chidushim and you've helped thousands and thousands of people do Tshuva doesn't mean you even have that Torah doesn't mean that you're always right what do you think that the people don't make mistakes people make mistakes and ego gets in the way many times so it's important to know a person needs to know you have to rely on experts and you cannot just simply cancel out all the experts in the world you know it better than everybody else that's gava sucha disgusting gava now as far as kashrut is concerned a person needs to know if you have bet yourself available to you in sephardic you get bet yourself if you're ashkenazi you don't get bet yourself you don't need to get bet yourself now there are places where they're not going to sell you bet yourself they don't have bet yourself they don't carry bet yourself does that mean that everything they say is not kosher for sephardi no it doesn't mean that why you have to call the kashrut you have to call the uh the uh the the, the butcher find out who's the meat tell them are you are you do you check for the slichot do you check the slichot the issues with the lungs that decide whether it's halak it's bet yourself or not for sfaradim why why do you care you say it doesn't have bet yourself so why do you care if he checks or he doesn't check because this comes to an issue of sfek sfeka double doubts meaning there are first of all there's some poskim that say that uh the uh you don't need to do this but aside from that there are many many uh, uh uh meat houses and so on they don't check for bet yourself they just simply have the kosher cow and they put everything together whether it's bet yourself or it's not bet yourself everything is mixed together if everything is mixed together both Sephardi and Ashkenazi Jews are allowed to eat it 100 percent now if they remove all of the bet yourself that's there and they sell it separately then you're not allowed as a Sephardi Jew you're not allowed to eat their meat not allowed to eat their meat because you know that all of their meat is not bet yourself for sure but if they put everything together which is the vast majority 
vast majority of shochtim and so on and meat producers they mix everything together they don't uh, they don't separate the two it's a big headache you have to sell it separately it's a you know it's a, it's a big it's not something that everybody does they simply put everything together which means that you can rely on a sfix fix a double doubt that the meat that you got that you're eating is bet yourself why because they're not they're just selling everything together that means that when I went for example myself to the supermarket and I asked them the question I said listen do you check for the do you check do you check the said no we don't check we put everything together oh I went to my rav my rav said 100 percent kosher eat the meat no problem so what about this what about that he says if you listen to that you're apikos I said I don't want to be an apikos he says okay so go eat the meat go eat the meat there was a period of time years ago five six years ago I stopped eating meat for a short period of time and I started f- becoming very very weak I didn't know it was because of that I thought it was I'm, I have naturally I have, I, have, uh, Hashem, I have a lot of health problems for uh what is it, 15 years now 16 years I'm in pain every single day of my life some days it's 24 hours a day sometimes it's a little less depending on whether I have a shoe or not but who gifts me with pain every single day of my life so I figured that I'm getting weak where sometimes literally I fall asleep on the dinner table I thought it's oh it's because of all the problems that I have okay it's another adult problem my Rav tells me it's because you're not eating meat so what do I have to do with meat I'm eating chicken I don't eat meat I'm just eating chicken go eat meat it gives you strength Rabbi says I do like a little good boy like a good little boy go and bought meat and got strength why you listen to your rabbi you win you listen to Tomit Chacham who knows what he's talking about you win you're listening to people who just like to say things and cause an uproar you lose 100 percent of the time especially if they're going against the Gdole Ado. anyone that goes against the Gdole Ado by default canceled out they're they're canceling themselves go against Rabu Vadya go against Rabbi Yashi go against the Gedolei Adol if you're going if one Gedol goes against another Gedol that's one thing but for for somebody that's a Tamit Chacham good person love the lectures love the books love everything but you go against Gedolei Adol something's wrong here something's wrong here and a lot of times these videos appear that go against the Shechita the the, the the slaughtering and the Kashrut and so on they come from all types of people who don't know what they're talking about they simply don't know what they're talking about one Chuma, for example that I could tell you about that I learned about recently is uh to, to ask if for 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 a chicken ch- chicken for the kashrut of chicken if you are a very stringent in your kashrut you could ask them if they uh they check uh, if they do the tzomet agidim. this is a part of the leg sometimes a uh like I said before when they put the uh the shots for medicine and things like that sometimes they're not careful and uh they uh, create a little bit of a hole and people that are stringent consider that tariff it's not tariff according to Allah but if somebody is stringent they uh they need to check for that but this is if you know what you're talking about most people don't know what they're talking about they, be- they barely even know how to cook chicken needless to say to check it so there are certain things you can ask do you do, do you do so do you check for summit agidim do you check for it no we don't check okay no problem you don't check you don't check you don't check oh which chita, who does it? is chabad is it a uh is it a uh, oh you is it uh somebody else different chassidut okay this is good this is good this is good they're all good they're all good chabad is good the uh the uh the other oh you is good they're all good they all why because they all all usually have multiple kashriyot it's not, it's usually not just chabad on the stamp it's usually chabad and also you or ou or it's a the uh, chasidut of some kind in, in in new york or in israel or and it's somebody else usually it's multiple kashriyot and also they are very uh, uh they hold up to the standards of glut glut more in so many words is like uh, uh, uh um the bet yosef glad is like bet yosef so that's that's a person doesn't know that he sees glad no no it's not kosher it's not kosher why because they're ashkenazi not sfaradi this faradi i'm ashkenazi nonsense nonsense 
so a person needs to know that if you want to uh, uh, check there is one thing that you can check for even if you don't know what you're talking about because you don't know how they slaughter or they didn't slaughter you don't know you don't know if the meat is this or that you don't know what can you know simple both when it comes to chicken as well as when it comes to beef anybody that's a, uh, in a slaughtering business you you, you buy your meat from them you ask them do you uh have a policy of some kind to make sure that the uh to uh not violate basal uh, uh, uh meaning that they have the uh the meat uh, uh just handled by non-jews at all times and there's no mashgiach there's no jew to uh to monitor them meaning there's no mashgiach on uh, on site at all now he doesn't have to be the mashgiach doesn't have to be on top of the uh of the employees at all time now if everybody's Jewish you don't have to worry about this but if the uh, there's non-Jews that are working which is very common uh, non-Jews working you have to make sure that there is a mashkiach on the premises at all times now he doesn't need to be on top of their head like a bird on a nest doesn't need to do that just needs to be in the premises be able to walk in and walk out at all times meaning that they could they're always conscious where they know that they can't play games they can't play games they can't uh, uh do things if you have mashgiach on the premises you don't have a problem with basari you can eat the kashrut no problem enjoy your meal for shabbat for during the week i don't know how often people eat meat and chicken and so on but bottom line is go enjoy the meat now you have to go check these things this to, to, to uh, the the questions that i'm asking you as far as do they have be- bet yourself or no they say don't oh, have bet yourself you ask them do you uh, check for sirchot or no? If they don't check for sirchot, that means that everything is allowed to you as Sephardi or Ashkenazi. If they don't check for sirchot, you are allowed there because you're relying on a double doubt that uh, what you're eating is Bet Yosef. What you're eating is Bet Yosef. And the next thing is you have to check uh, whether there's a issue of Basari Talemi Na'ain, which is uh, whether uh, they, there is no uh, supervision. There's no mashkiach you know he opens the door he leaves everybody there and he comes back in a few hours that's a problem that's a problem but if there's somebody there all the time and perhaps there's shifts and so on but there's always somebody there then you are okay you can go buy your meat and enjoy it and uh as far as the 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 the, the, the real issues usually are with people not with the kashriot meaning the store itself is unethical where sometimes i've seen where you have meat it has a sticker on it okay it has a sticker on it but uh they're saying that uh they have kashrut and so on fine you get the the uh, the food to your house you take the meat looks good you open up the meat under it all of it is mold the whole thing is mold now this can happen once in a while but if it happens on a multiple times on a regular basis then you know there's something wrong then you know that perhaps the store itself not the kashrut the store itself is playing with the packaging they're selling you uh bad meat and unfortunately that does happen so i would recommend going to eat buy meat from places where the uh the people running it are uh, religious jews or they uh, they have a mashkiach that's a religious jew that has uh that uh you know that they uh these these people are are uh, reliable unfortunately just because people are religious doesn't necessarily mean they have yirat shamayim so you have to have you have to ask some of these questions if they don't give you any answers to anything or if they're nasty or if you constantly have problems with them find someone else find someone else find a different place that uh, is going to sell you the meat i mean i remember why for a while i was ordering meat uh from a uh, place in new york and uh that i heard had good meat and good stuff and then uh, one time I ordered the, uh, the the food from them, and it arrived on Shabbat. Now I paid extra to make sure it comes before Shabbat. Not that I needed it for Shabbat; I already had meat, but I ordered it for the, you know the, the 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 month ahead. So I paid extra to make sure it comes to me before Shabbat. Delivery came on Shabbat. On Shabbat. Now I got really upset about it because now I can't touch the box the whole Shabbat. It came like uh, Friday night or something like that. I paid for it to come on Thursday. It came on free, you know, came Friday night. It's already Shabbat. That means the box has to stay outside 
and uh, defrost quickly the whole Shabbat. The whole, you know, it's going to be 24, 25 hours that it's outside. I can't touch it. It's mukze. It's a problem. It's this. It's that. It's annoying. Now, that in itself doesn't make me uh, uh, cancel out my uh, my uh, agreement with the company. But when I called them, when I contacted them, I listen, I paid extra for it to come for this. Ah, so what if it arrived on Shabbat? That was the response. As soon as they told me, so what if it arrived on Shabbat? I know that even bubble gum with a kosher stamp on it, I wouldn't buy from them. As soon as they showed me that they have zero Yirat Shemaim, I can't rely on anything that they say. Doesn't matter what. As soon as they told me, so what? It came on Shabbat. They don't care. That's it. They could have a stamp from Gan Eden. It wouldn't matter to me. Same thing with another place. I would buy meat from them. And many times I'd see this mold. One, two, three, four, five times. No. Come on. What, what, you got a mold infection here? What's going on? I realized this is all criminal strategy of the of the operation i wouldn't buy uh you know a, a newspaper from that place i wouldn't buy miss newspaper anyway but i'm saying nothing i would buy from them nothing why the people are criminals another place i went to the people are cursing each other yelling each other yelling at the customers cursing the customers same thing i wouldn't go there I wouldn't go there now if you have kashrut where you have the people running the place a decent people ethical people there's a mashkiach ethical and so on you are not allowed to cancel them out and say that they're not selling kosher meat, that they're selling people tarif. Not allowed. Not allowed. And if you listen to anybody that, you, that that's telling you so, you are practicing apikosut, heresy. No different than Manus Friedman. No different than uh, all these other reshaim that we have. Why? That's what it is. That's what it is. You cannot just decide for yourself that the whole world is uh, wicked people. Can't do it can't decide the whole world is wicked people you have to know what you're talking about you have to check you have to make phone calls or have somebody that knows what they're talking about make phone calls point being is you can't just cancel out the whole world and say no I'm just gonna assume that uh, there's no kosher meat on planet earth anymore this is a mistake that a lot of people make so uh, again like I said it's a there's a lot of details when it comes to shita that people not only they don't know it they already assume the wrong answer they assume the wrong answer like the examples that i gave and this is a very very big mistake we've all made it and bo hashem that you asked the question so at least today we learned it because i have no idea what other time i would ever talk about this topic Seven years of lectures. Seven months of film editing. Countless hours of study by two rabbis. Information we received over 3,000 years ago. All for this moment. Tukum had greed. The movie. There's a small number in your life. It shouldn't take over your whole life. If you Satiate it. You're never going to have enough. The Sofer clan, when it gets a hold of something, it does not let go. Time for us to rectify what we have done. Normal numbers should be somewhere around 20 million or higher. You're never gonna have control of it. If you start it, you only feed it when it's permissible according to the Torah. Pornography is as addictive as crack cocaine. You're always gonna be happy. 
this world and the next. Bauch Adonai Le'olav, Amen Dami.